Today, uh, let us begin with uh, a very, very important topic in material science and that is phase diagram. So, this will constitute uh, a sort of chapter in our material science course and we will spend quite some time on phase diagram. Let us begin with an introduction to the phase diagrams. It is best to introduce phase diagram with an example. So, let us take an example um, as an example copper nickel copper nickel alloy. In phase diagram jargon or phase diagram terminology alloys are also sometimes called system. So, you can say copper nickel alloy or you can say copper nickel system. Now, let us look at some basic fact about copper and nickel. Copper is uh, cubic close packed in crystal structure and it melts at the melting point. The melting point of copper is 1085 degrees Celsius and nickel is also cubic close packed and its melting point is a higher melting point is 1453 degrees Celsius. So, if I simply look at let us say if I just look at copper. And let me consider this vertical axis to represent temperature. So, this is my temperature. in degrees Celsius. So, this is my temperature axis and on this temperature axis let me mark the melting point of copper. So, that is there. Which is 1085 degrees Celsius. So, I know now that above this melting point the phase which will be present will be the liquid phase. So, you have liquid there and below the melting point I will have solid and at the melting point you will have both liquid and solid. So, in particular I do not have a space here, but let me try to include liquid plus solid at this point. So, only at that point only at the melting point the two phases will be in equilibrium. So, in a sense I already have this one dimensional phase diagram where temperature is the only variable and with temperature varying I know that there is a critical point called melting point above the melting point liquid phase is stable below the melting point solid phase is stable and at the melting point both liquid and solid phases can be in equilibrium. Now, let me look at now let me look at nickel and I create a similar one dimensional phase diagram for nickel. So, again I have the temperature axis and the melting point is higher. So, if I have the same temperature scale for this, so 1453 will be plotted at a higher point and that is melting point of nickel 1453. So, just like I have a cop one dimensional copper phase diagram with temperature as my only variable. 
of course, I could have drawn the since it is a single variable and usually if you have only one variable you plot it as your x axis, but I am plotting it as a y axis you will soon realize why. So, because x axis I need for composition. So, um, on this temperature axis again there is a melting point, above the melting point you have liquid phase, this will of course, be liquid nickel now and below you have a solid phase which will be solid nickel. So, it will be cubic close packed nickel. So, this solid is CCP nickel, whereas this solid was CCP copper. Now, let me use this x axis, let me join this with a horizontal line, which now gives me a composition axis and let me use this composition axis as let me call that weight percent nickel as my composition. So, this is a composition. So, x axis is composition and the unit which I am using for composition is the weight percent nickel. Obviously, copper has 0 weight percent nickel. So, if I write here 0 weight percent nickel and pure nickel itself is 100 weight percent nickel. So, the composition axis varies from 0 to 100 and if I take any point if I take any point in between. So, that will be 50 percent nickel. So, any alloy, any alloy of copper or nickel which I make will be some point in this axis. You can have 10 percent, 20 percent, 50 percent, 70 percent, 90 percent and so on. So, any alloy which I make will be some point on this axis. So, the entire copper nickel alloy system is represented on this x axis from copper to nickel and in particular let me focus my attention on this 50 percent alloy. Now, just like can I draw a phase diagram for this 50 percent copper 50 percent nickel alloy. I had the one dimensional phase diagram for copper, where only important point was the melting point of copper. I had one dimensional phase diagram for nickel, where only important point was the melting point of nickel and I knew all the phases above the melting point it is liquid, below the melting point it is solid and at the melting point liquid plus solid. Now, I similarly ask what will be the phases or what will be the melting point, the critical melting point for 50 percent nickel. So, it will be somewhere on this line and not knowing anything about the, uh, the system, let us assume that we do not know about the system anything as yet. So, what we can try to do is to do a linear interpolation. So, I try to do a linear interpolation between uh, these two melting points. In other words, I am assuming that melting point varies linearly from the melting point of copper to melting point of nickel as I vary the composition. Then obviously, melting point of this alloy 50 percent alloy which is of my interest at the moment. So, this melting point will be predicted exactly in between the melting point of copper and nickel. So, I will get the alloy melting point, the predicted melting point as just the mean value of these two melting points. Which will be 1269 degrees Celsius. 
which is a reasonable not knowing anything, it is a reasonable prediction that copper is melting at uh, 1083, uh, nickel is melting at 1453 degrees Celsius. So, at an intermediate temperature, at an average temperature of 1269 degrees Celsius, my alloy 5050 alloy, 50 copper, 50 nickel alloy will melt at this temperature. But when I do the experiment, actual experiment, I will find that liquid starts appearing at a temperature lower than what I had predicted. So, below 1269 the melting actually begins. Let me call that temperature for the moment as T s. So, melt actual melting begins at a temperature T s less than the value predicted by this linear interpolation. Again another interesting thing is that when I was melting the pure copper and it was solid, solid uh, and till melting point it was solid and at the melting point liquid started to appear. And when I gave further heat to this uh, copper, the temperature did not rise, you know about the latent heat. So, the heat was not increasing the temperature, it was only converting more copper into liquid. So, this latent heat concept was there for pure copper and similarly for pure nickel. So, the entire melting for this pure components entire melting happened at one temperature, but this happens not to be the case for this alloy. If I do the experiment on alloy, I will find that although melting is started at this T s, if I give more heat the temperature rises as well as more liquid forms. If I give further more heat still more liquid forms, but along with more liquid forming temperature is also rising. So, finally, I find that the 100 percent liquid appears at a higher temperature than my mid temperature and let me call that temperature T L. So, I find that our prediction was incorrect, although we were still in the sense were right that we were predicting an intermediate temperature, but a new feature appeared that melting unlike pure component melting is not happening at one fixed temperature with latent heat involved, but melting is happening over a range of temperature. Melting starts at T s and melting completes at T L. If I do this for different alloy compositions, then I will find suppose instead of 50 percent now I make 25 percent alloy and I find where the uh, liquid first begins. So, I plot T s for that and similarly where 100 percent liquid forms. So, I make T L for that. And similarly, for 75 percent, I have a T L and I have a T S. Now, if I do experiments for all different compositions and find the T L temperature and the T S temperature for all of them, then I can I find that T L varies as a function of composition and similarly the T s varies as a function of composition. And these boundaries we call T l is called the liquidus boundary and T s is called the solidus boundary these are special terminology with which you should become familiar. So, now essentially what I am saying that for alloy the melting happens over a range of temperature above T l you will have pure liquid phase for any composition above liquidus temperature you will have a single liquid phase. Below T s no melting will happen and you will have 
a single solid phase. Solid phase in phase diagram is usually represented by Greek letters. So, let me write this as alpha and since this alpha you can see this alpha will contain both solid and both copper and nickel. So, it is a solid solution and copper and nickel are of the almost same size. So, they make substitutional solid solution. So, this alpha is a solid, but let us write it in detail that it is a substitutional solid solution of copper and nickel. And recall Hume-Rodri rule that now we are having substitutional solid solution from right from one end to the other end. So, this fact is related to the Hume-Rodri rule that this is possible only if the two solids have the same crystal structure. And here we are fortunate that both uh, copper and nickel are actually CCP. So, this kind of continuous substitutional solid solution is possible. So, alpha, alpha is your below T s you have a single solid solution alpha, above liquidus you have a single phase liquid. In between these two regions in this lens shaped region you will have both solid and liquid phases. So, you will have liquid plus alpha. So, this completes our phase diagram of copper nickel system. Where the x axis is the composition which is starts from 0 percent nickel which is pure copper to 100 percent nickel which is pure nickel. The y axis is temperature which starts from some low temperature to some high temperature including the melting points of both the components and we have two boundaries in this phase diagram one liquidus boundary above which liquid phase is stable a solidus boundary below which a solid phase is stable and a lens shaped region between liquidus and solidus where both phases are stable. So, this is the phase diagram of copper nickel because it is telling us what phases are in equilibrium at what different compositions and temperature. So, let us end this uh, video with a sort of definition. So, we have already a concrete example of a phase diagram, but let us give a definition of what is called an equilibrium phase diagram. So, in full actually it should be called equilibrium phase diagram, but sometimes it is uh, shortened to equilibrium diagram which means the same thing. Or sometimes more commonly to simply phase diagram which is what we have been using. phase diagram. So, let us make an attempt to define this. So, a diagram. So, what we saw that the phase diagram of copper and nickel was a diagram in temperature and composition space. So, you have some thermodynamic variables in a space of which you make your diagram. So, a diagram we are trying to generalize it little bit more to include other kinds of phase diagram. So, a diagram in the space of relevant 
thermodynamic variables. Uh, just to make it uh, concrete and connect it with our example. So, our in that diagram, the relevant thermodynamic variables was for example, the relevant thermodynamic variable which we considered was temperature. and composition, but the definition as written accommodates other phase diagrams where for example, if you want to study the um, um, effect of other variables like pressure or electric or magnetic field on what kind of phases you get. So, you can have those variables as part of your phase diagram. So, a diagram in the space of relevant thermodynamic variables indicating phases in equilibrium is called a phase diagram. So, the nickel copper diagram which we gave as an example as our first example and we will work with this example more as we go along. So, that is our standard example for the first part of the course. So, in that example you saw that it was a diagram in temperature composition space and it was telling me at different compositions and temperature what phases are in equilibrium. So, this is the job of an equilibrium phase diagram. So, we can take this as the definition of the phase diagram. 